Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name is Stuart, and today it's time for another Warhammer The Old World themed painting tutorial. Of course, Warhammer Fantasy as well, but the eagle eyed of you will notice that this Night Goblin is on a 25mm square base, which will be the new size for anything that was previously based on a 20mm in the Old World rules when they are released. That's one snippet of information they have given us. Now, the reason I did this is because Many people have suggested that some of the smaller models might look a little bit swamped, and I wanted to see for myself how it would look. Um, unpainted, it is definitely looks a little bit strange because of the space around the base. Most of that, I think, is because we're not used to it. But well, you will see once it's painted and there's flock and there's, there's tufts and, and, and basing material on there, I don't think it looks too bad. How it'll look together as a whole unit, again, I'm not so sure, but they're probably more of a realistic space apart in terms of being able to swing a sword and fight anyway. It's it's just visually not quite what we're used to. So let's quickly cover what I want to achieve with this video. I want to make sure that I'm only painting this miniature to a tabletop standard. These are likely to come in big blocks, 30, 40, even 50 sometimes, depending on the edition of the game. And the last thing you want to be doing is spending hours and hours on each individual miniature. So I wanted to find a method that I could use that would be repeatable um, and something maybe I can and sort of push my son towards or help my son with in the future, or at least some of the techniques because he's painting his own Orcs and Goblin army right now. So as usual in my videos, there is a little bit of a jump off point in the middle where I present the miniature at a very sort of basic tabletop level at a standard I'd think, you know what, that would be absolutely fine to game with now. It won't just be flat color at that stage. It will have a little bit of shading, usually via the use of contrast paint, but um, I will then go on afterwards and add a few more highlights, but still keep it very much within that tabletop standard. So let's crack right into it. So we're starting with a black miniature, primed black, and I'm not going to be doing any zenithal highlighting, which I often do. I'm going to be starting with petroleum grey from scale 75. This is a very much a sort of charcoal -y grey black, like an old Chardon granite. I'm not sure what the current Citadel version of that is. And I'm just doing a bit of a top down dusting just to slightly lighten the top areas. If you don't have an airbrush you can actually very lightly dry brush this color on just maybe use a makeup brush or something go on really really light you want a very faint dusting you don't want to overly catch the edges so if you're concerned about it you could skip this stage Next up, I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Color German Grey, and this is another dry brush stage. Now, this is to pick out the edges of the black fabric of his cloak and his hood. Um, but I'm covering the whole miniature because I'm going to be using a bit of a grey scale for some contrast paints later. So actually picking out the edges and things really aids with that, and you'll see a little bit further with the next stage. So what I'm doing now in absence of a zenith or highlight, which I really like to work with, I'm actually going to paint in almost in grayscale using Citadel Grey Seer. So I'm going now onto the, the nose, the, uh, the, the cheekbones around the edges of the mouth. I'll pick out the teeth. I'm going to pick out the knuckles and fingers and the main parts. And the reason this works is because there's very little skin area on these night goblins. If you had larger areas, so whole arms showing or whole backs and legs and things like that, um, it doesn't work quite as well and, and you don't save any time by doing this. I mean, the process would work, but it would definitely be quite time consuming. But over that dry brush grey that you've got there, just adding in these higher level parts, when I add in the contrast paint a little bit later in the process, you'll find that it just gives that same effect that a good zenith or highlight would do. And I'll also go along and pick out the, uh, the rope belt just again on the tops, not in the recesses. And I'll also pick out the moon on the shield. So here I'm using Vallejo Express Color Lizard Green. I really love this. If you're a contrast user, the Orc um, Green is a very, very good one as well. And a fairly similar color. I trialed both and I felt that this was my favorite. So I'm applying this undiluted directly to the skin areas that we've just given that kind of grayscale highlight. 
And what you'll find is there you've got this natural shadow and highlight showing up already. Yes, of course you could have painted the whole area green and then highlighted. I think this is less work because essentially what you're doing is in reverse, but where you get a smoother finish to it. Now I will do some highlighting in the later stages of the video, but if you are gonna go for a very, very basic quick skin method, this is great and this is kind of like slap job i suppose but a more precise version of it where you're painting in the under highlights first but when it's such a small area and there's not much to cover i think it works quite well So next up, turn into contrast Nasdrag yellow. I'm just going to paint in the yellow on the moon on the shield. Then to contrast Garagax sewer, I'm going to be painting in over the rope belt. Now onto the metallics. I'm using scale color decayed metal. You could skip this stage and go straight for a sort of steel color. I like this to go underneath the, the steel color I use in a lot of my metal recipes. It gives the color a little bit of depth when you leave it in the recesses, especially with the brown tones coming through. It works quite nicely for weapons of this type when you wouldn't expect them to be particularly well looked after. Now onto that silver color, so I'm using a black metal also from scale color. And I'm just gonna go around the areas that I've already covered in the decayed metal, but leaving a little bit in the recesses. Now using some contrast blood angels red, I'm just gonna dot in the eyes. Now, I, when I was doing that grayscale earlier on, and I didn't mention it, but I dotted in whites of the eyes using the same citadel gray sear. So now I can just add them in with red and that's them done. And there we have it. It's the jump off point. That was a quick down and dirty goblin, but it's absolutely gameable. You've actually got some shade and some highlights on there this subtle dry brushing works well so you've got a gray black cloak and the skin looks fantastic for such a basic paint job and all that bit of underpainting did it for you now how much you add here is totally up to you all the next stages you can pick and choose or you could do none of them but if you're painting a large chunk of these this could well be good enough especially when based maybe add a slight dry brush of a brighter silver on there a little bit of blood effects or something and away you go i'm going to show you how i developed the black as well and highlight the yellow on the shield and all those other little bits So moving back to the Night Goblin's clothing, I'm using a 50-50 mix of Contrast Black Legion and some Medium. The Express color is just the one I happen to have to hand. And I'm basically making a glaze and I'm going back in over the whole clothing area. And what you'll find is that any of the dry brushing that looks a little bit heavy, it will glaze and tone that down, but it'll also add a dark back into the recesses and adding a bit like a wash there. And it really just deepens the color and makes sure it looks black again. And you can see there already, you've still got edge highlights from the, uh, um, the dry brushing earlier on and that glaze is just kind of filling it out. And again, you could stop at that stage. I will move on and touch up and reinforce some of those highlights slightly but you can use as many of these techniques depending on how long you wish to work on each individual miniature now using some undiluted contrast black legion I've decided to further reinforce some of the shadows with thin lines. And then this is just another example of stuff you can do if you want to. You can always go back at a later stage and do these once you've painted your whole regiment and you decided you want to tidy it up a little bit. This is just the painter in me thinking, oh, I'm just gonna reinforce this or do that. But I've left it in the video because it just shows you what you can do if you want to, and it's still relatively quick and simple. And doing this is, is 
quicker than edge highlighting. Which very neatly brings us on to edge highlighting if you want to. So this is model color German Grey, which is the color we dry brush with. And now you can just go back and reinforce some of those top highlights if you so wish. And I've decided to do it again for the same reasons as mentioned before. It just shows you what you can do if you want to take that miniature to a slightly higher tabletop standard. Um, I won't be doing further highlights on this, under that sort of two stage or three stage highlighting. But again, it just makes you pop that little bit more. Take or leave what you want of these. they are just examples for you to, to try it on your own miniatures. Now for some model colour German camo bright green and this is what I'm going to use to start to reinforce the highlights on the skin. They look pretty good as they are and this is very very similar shade to that top highlight that's been produced by the underpainting but it just makes it pop that little bit more so I'm going around picking out the bridge of the nose, the, the tops of the cheekbones, knuckles, that kind of thing. Then using a 50-50 mix of the same colour with the green and yellow from model colour, this just adds a further highlight to the skin if you so wish to add it. So very much just the tip of the nose, the knuckles, that kind of thing. I'm using Express Colour Deep Purple here and I'm just very, very gently painting it in around the edge of the nose and then into the mouth just to add a little bit of warmer colour to represent that on the face. This again on a, on a big unit of 40 or something as a stage you may choose not to do but it's so quick and easy to do that if you were batch painting you would find it wouldn't add much time at all. It definitely adds a lot of depth especially inside the mouth. And using Citadel Colour Avalan Sunset and Phalanx Yellow just to highlight on the shield and tidy all that back up. Now for some model colour green ochre to highlight the rope belt. Of course, you've already got that natural shade and highlight for the underpainting and the contrast. And this just essentially gives you that second layer of highlight effect. Now using a little bit of Game Air Silver just to make the weapon and the edge of the shield really, really pop where the light would catch. So just catching the edges here and the top of the sword. Now with him being a night goblin and all, we don't want it to look too shiny, so I'm painting in some Agrax Earthshade to add a little bit of shadow on the blade and really dull it down, but still doing my best to leave those very, very top edges as quite shiny. Then adding in a few scratches as well. And that's how simple it is. We're on to the finishing touches. So I'm adding some earth texture from Vallejo. And while that's drying, I'm adding some blood for the blood god to the blade on the top of the shield. Now this is the new formula stuff. I didn't realize it had changed. I'm a bit sad. This isn't as good. Um, the other one I found was quite gloopy to start with and then you could thin it nicely with water. This seems to work the other way. You know, it's quite it's a little bit thinner, slightly less rich in tone. But I find it does work, but I find you want to build it up a little bit more when the other one was almost slop it on and feather it out. Uh, and maybe it just, it's going to take me some time to get used to it, and, but it, it, it's almost like another manufacturer's version of it. It's so different. But so be it, it is what it is. I'll uh, learn to work with this one, but I do prefer the old one. Now for some gain colour off white, just to pick out the teeth a little bit and make them stand out. And now that the basing texture is dry, I can slop on a liberal amount of Agrax Earthshade. Once that is dry, I will brush on some dry pigments. This is Light Center. 
finally adding some two millimeter tufts, a bit of a mix of colors here. Then as is a goblin, I don't want to make him look like he's rushing through spring grass too much. I'm adding some Vallejo thick mud effect and I'm actually painting that over the tufts a little bit and making it look like the, the earth has been churned up um, by lots of marching feet. And this really kind of makes it a little bit more grim. I even put a few small splatters up around the edges of the goblin's clothing. And then as I always do, I like to finish my bases with a black rim. And there we go, one tabletop night goblin finished. Now I believe I could batch paint those to the same standard relatively quickly and it's a good tabletop standard. And I hope you will find all the different points that you could jump off or add and leave techniques if you're looking to follow this yourself. The black clothing is the area with most of the work that you could change. The dry brush and, and wash method works or just the basic highlight and dry brushes method. They all work, they're all viable. Um, if you find you are a little bit heavy with that dry brush and like I said, making that glaze out of the contrast paint works quite well. Whether you wanna go back and do further highlights, totally up to you. By painting in the skin, the way it, way it where I did it really makes it pop even without the highlights um, and that may well be enough for you and you can put your effort into making sure that the metallics and things are finished and pop and then as a unit will stand out really really nicely. So I will continue to work on these Warhammer fantasy stroke old world theme single figure painting tutorials. I will normally aim for core troops, so rank and file troops, but it will depend on what I've got in my collection. The next up will be um, a Knight of the Realm, which I'm working on for my own Bretonian force, which you may well have seen in recent videos. I'll pop a link into the, the recent video about that project now. I also have some Empire State Troops, I'm so I'm sure one of those will appear in the tutorial at some point because I'll have fun painting those. But I'm really enjoying the one-off miniatures for a bit of fun anyway, so I might well get to paint some races that I never did back in the days when I played for armies that I, I never collected. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. It really does help the video get seen by others. And let me know that I'm doing a decent job. If you uh, like the other stuff you see on the channel and you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. It really helps support the channel. Um, and there will be lots more stuff um, related to Warhammer Fantasy, if that's what you are looking for. With the release of the old world, I'm getting quite excited. So there will be a good mix of videos in that theme, along with all the other stuff that you normally see on the channel. So thank you very much, take care, and I'll catch you soon.